Okay, folks, here we go. Another video, this time um, oil painting once again. And I've got this little colored pencil drawing here that I'm gonna use as the basis for my painting. Today, I am going to teach, uh, or I'm going to do a monochromatic underpainting, which is a, a tonal painting. It's just light and dark values in a single color that will be allowed to dry. And then I'll end up glazing over and doing whatever else I need to do to it, some scrubbing and glazing and impasto and so forth. I'm probably gonna set this drawing or, or copy this drawing into the lower half of the section because I wanna do a, a night scene here, a starry evening kind of thing. So uh, let's see, I've got a, a, a piece of masonite here. You know, it's the standard brown hardboard masonite. I like to use that, I sometimes use um, uh, the Danish plywood panels. And uh, I just like it because it doesn't have that, that textural canvas weave in it that I just really don't like fighting with. The paint I'm gonna use is some oil paint raw umber. I've got a container here sitting by, which is half for my medium, I'm using half Galcat Light, half Gamasol, because I want it to be somewhat uh, runny. This is my standard medium. This is for cleaning your brushes, but Again, when I want it really thin, hopefully, I guess they're in camera, sure. Uh, hopefully when I want it thin, I, I use both of these. Paper towel, of course, for scrubbing paint around. And uh, my paper plate for a palette. The brushes I have are, I have a big square brush, a flat or bright, whatever the hell it's called. A nice big round, small round, really small round. And then I have a little rubber tips scraping tool. And there's there's another one of these here. Sometimes they look like that, pony on one side, little wedge on the other. And I got a little round tip scraping, rubber tipped scraping tool that's also round. I use that to kind of remove paint once in a while to define some tree trunks or something. So um, I'm diving right in. I just get everything in the right place. Look at my drawing, put it aside and just get in there and paint. So I'm gonna take uh, the large square brush. Again, I'm using raw umber, which is a lot like burnt umber. It's just slightly more yellow. First, I'm gonna establish that I want my, my foreground to be very low. And I'm gonna just rough in a few of these, these shapes. Got a tree right there or some sort. Very simply just wander through, look at the various shapes in the drawing and um, make some kind of area. I felt like I don't wanna make that too tall, but there you go. Block in some area, get your dark in there. In fact, I, I shouldn't call this dark. I'm trying to be very light with this. I got some other pine trees over here. Normally when I paint like this, I do not use a reference drawing, but I know a lot of people would, would really struggle with being able to do that. So in this instance, I am basically copying my, my colored pencil drawing. I like to paint uh, from my imagination. I prefer to paint from my imagination because I think it gives you um, a better painting. We don't get we don't get imprisoned by trying to copy something that you, you already have done. And you're able to just paint without the restriction of, oh, does it look like the, the person or the, does it look like that tree? Does it even resemble the photograph? So I do not rarely work from photographs. I do work from photographs if I'm doing watercolor because generally the subject matter that I paint with watercolor is architectural. It really requires a fairly intricate drawing. So I do work on photographs. Okay, so in this case, hopefully you can see how I've reimagined the painting. So I've got all my light values, or, or just a light mess is really what I have here. I, I look at the drawing and I see that the, probably the darkest thing are these evergreens. So I'm gonna add a little bit more paint 
a little more paint, a little less medium to those areas. And I'm trying to make the, or put the brush strokes in the general sort of direction that the trees grow in. And some of these trees, we'll do it over here. You know, it's kind of spartan at the top and these um, needles and, or, or limbs with needles and pine cones and all that might be somewhat erect. And then sometimes as they, they go a little lower on the tree, they might droop a little bit and, you know, kind of go something like that. So you can see how I do that with, with the brush. Yeah, there you go, just one stroke. I like to do that one stroke painting style. There's actually a couple of trees here, so redo that a little bit. A little more dark paint. Again, trying to get that sort of uh, organic nature of those of those trees the way they go. There's a zigzag, so we roughen that up a little bit. And then once again over here, a couple more there, and we get closer to being done. All right, so there's our evergreens. Now, these trunks are quite likely going to be dark later. I don't know, you kind of, I, I frequently go back and forth with values. I, I see in my drawing they're dark, but just to define them a little bit, I'm gonna show you how I use this tool. A trunk coming up this tree is not going to be, it is not going to look like that, okay? What's gonna happen is the trunk peaks here and there where the limbs might be a little less, or might be a little more Spartan and, and you know, your, your um, trunk and, and maybe some of the limbs sometimes sneak through, or peek through, all right? So something like that. Now again, I'm gonna probably make that dark but I want you to, to see my thinking behind it. Now over here, what I'll do perhaps is take some medium and some dark, and I'm gonna put the, put the trunk in really dark. And I just kind of lay the brush here, pull it, pull it like that. More darks, here we go. Starting up there. And then down here just sort of peeks out a little bit. Let's see, maybe back here, this one. And lastly, we'll just do that one. And we may come in just for fun. Come out of there. Scrape up, wrong tool. The square one doesn't work as well. So that's this round one. So we just kind of suggest a few of these limbs. And obviously we can pull away from the tree trunk. I have a few more on the ground like that. There you go. So we now have, we go back as usual. I put out far more brushes than I'm even gonna bother using. So that's life. I could have just as well taken this paper towel and taken some, some paint. And, uh, and in fact, I do this quite a lot to get the tree area in you know, to cover a large area. Then I'm gonna come back and note that this is actually a fairly light bush. I've made it look like an autumn scene, so I may continue doing that. So to that end, I'm gonna darken up this, this these hills in the background. I'm gonna darken up a little bit. But I immediately feel that they're a little too dark. So let me just shape this a little bit and I'll show you how I'm gonna fix that. And we make these hills in the background somewhat even. And then, you know, I think it's a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna take the towel and kind of bunch it up a little bit like that. Maybe just blot out some of those areas between the trees. I don't want the, the background and the trees to be the same value. I want one or the other to stand out a little bit more. All right, so continuing, we're gonna go back to the square brush and sort of shape these these rounded, uh, larger bits of greenery, whatever they are. I don't know what they are. You know, you, sometimes you have to just decide as you go along what they are. 
I just view them as large bits of shrubbery of some kind. Maybe a little evergreen bush down here. Maybe a couple more of those darks. And frequently in the foreground, I just do something like this. I'm just going to make it fairly dark because I don't want it to be attracting too much attention. Just kind of blend it like that. Put a few darks in here like I was just demonstrating to suggest maybe it's some other other types of brush greenery on the ground, maybe a few off, I'm going to say off screen, off, off the image, off the edge of the image. So you used to looking at televisions and telephones, I say off screen sometimes. All right, so my trees, I want them to come down a little bit more. So I'm going to find, have this like medium round brush, get some more dark. And I want to tuck in some some the darker evergreen, a little lower down between these these other bushes. I want to bring them down. I want them to be more more dominant and come down a little lower into the painting, into the image area. There we go. And then of course, let's see. Go back to our really small brush. And in these big bushes, I'm going to create a little bit of a, a line work or limbs or a trunk, you know, something to connect them to the landscape. I break up the edges a little bit. And then once, let's see, see, I'm just pulling these. Let's just say this is where it goes into the ground, okay? And I look at my, my limbs and I try to pull them. And maybe it's got a couple of places where it goes into ground because these are growing together. So I pull my, my limbs towards that, that center source like that. Once again over here, say there's a different type of plant. Maybe this is a little bit more of an erect type of trunk arrangement. Maybe it has a couple of main trunks, maybe even three like that. Roughen up these edges. Maybe you can put a couple of Let's see, we'll put a trunk in there. Something like that. Darken up these bits over here. And I'm just kind of suggesting. You see, I'm not trying to do a literal photo, photographic representation of a tree. I'm just suggesting the, the shape and the angles and the direction that everything grows in. All right, so I feel like I'm throwing this picture together. I feel like your eye drifts a little bit too much to over here. So I'm going to get rid of some of that light area, bring it in a little bit, a little bit higher. Maybe that's too high. So again, I just trust my instincts, you know, take that out a little bit, lower that a little bit. I wanted it to be somewhat angular, but, but not, not too high. All right, so let's go back to our little round rubber tool and maybe scratch out. Let's see if we get lucky with this. There we go. Scratch out a few other bits of light. So we've got this middle ground, this middle value. We've got the dark, and we can say that, you know, the, the light, sunlight, moonlight, whatever it is, is kind of working around around the edges. See how that works? You get your light, your middle, your dark. Same thing here. I've scratched out uh, details with a pocket knife for years and I discovered these little rubber tools. I can get them. There's a five or six in a pack. It's about $30. So they're not cheap, but that's not going to break you. Um, but they're really indispensable for removing paint like this. And I think I said already there are five or six tools, rubber tip. See, mine get really gunked up pretty quickly. But I use them a lot, so I really recommend, especially when I'm doing this type of painting, I really recommend that you, you grab a set. Uh, Dick Blick has them and probably uh, Jerry's Artorama. I don't know if Michaels carries them or not, but they may. All right, so a couple more 
textural scratch marks here, little sticks on the ground, whatever you want to call it. Maybe a couple of light tree trunks back there. You know, just to give, give the painting something besides these darks. Probably be a winter scene in that the only foliage is going to be the evergreen. So I just felt the need to have a few things peeking through. Let's see, do we need to do any more here? So, and then something like that. And then, uh, let's see, I suppose I should have done something with the sky earlier, but you know, I, I frequently forget to do that. So here's how we fix that. I'm just gonna tuck some, some color in like that. Darken up the top and the corners. And then just, uh, you'll hear me say this a lot. Let your, just put the paint on, on the brush. Work the brush until you run out of paint and keep painting. Don't reach for more paint. And what that gives you is a variety of, of value and it allows you to kind of soften around all the edges. Like this. All right. I get myself talked out. It's kind of hard to talk and, and think about your painting at the same time. So every now and then I kind of uh, zone out a little bit. All right. So you see how I left this light around the edges? There's no need to go in there and feel like you need to touch up everything around these trees because in fact, in this case, this is gonna be a night scene and it will probably end up being a moon in it. I'm darkening up the tips of these trees because you see, you know, they're gonna be light where against the dark and they're gonna be dark against the light. We'll make that a dead pine tree. All right, so we have something like that and I feel the need, oh, often feel the need if this is gonna be a night scene, obviously I'm gonna put a moon in it somewhere. So where is that gonna be? Let me just add a little dark around the corners while I ponder that. This is an old trick that I learned from looking at um, there's these to, people who own steamships used to, you know, back in the 1800s, hired people to paint those steamships at sea. And they always darkened the, the two corners in the sky and the two corners in the bottom and it made you focus on the, the steamship in the middle and make it look really special. So that's what I do with painting sometimes to focus your attention Where's the center of the painting? Okay, so we got all that. Where's our sun? There's no sun. Where's the moon gonna be? I think, I think, I don't know. Hmm, isn't that something? I keep, I keep gravitating towards here, so I'm gonna wipe that out just a little bit. And in fact, maybe I'll take a, just a little bit of this, this medium that I have earlier. There you go. Might give it a little, little wider path there. Darken it again. Don't be afraid to manipulate it and change it. You know, I want it to be, you know, kind of glow out a little bit, but I want this, this brighter spot to be in the, in the middle here. There we go. Something like that. And obviously I'm gonna paint here later, but you know, you could almost just leave it like that and have it work. And of course, I'll, I'll put some stars in here later, so maybe we'll blot out a few little, little highlights there, little glow spots, if you want to call it that. Little, little glow from the stars. I'm gonna paint this one out because you wouldn't see the star. The light of the moon kind of um, blasts those a little bit, so I might just give it a little spin here and there, something like that. Couple more. Might even 
take, let's see, where's our little rubber tool? See if this helps any. Yeah, you can do it that way. That's that's a little bit too much of a hard edge. So I might do it this way to clean it out a little bit. Yeah, and then I'm gonna just kind of fingerprint it a little bit to soften those edges. Any any number of ways you can do this. You learn by experimenting. So that's an important thing to to know. All right, so all right, one more thing. I keep thinking I'm done, but you know I keep finding something else. Clean out some sky holes in this tree a little bit. I want this particular tree to be a little bit more Spartan, a little bit more sky coming through than I, I was allowing in the first place. So I'm gonna just create some peekaboo effects where that sky is coming through here and there. Okay, I think that'll be a nice painting. So that is it for this session. I will come back in a few days after this is dry and um, do some some color, some glazing. And it'll be a lot of fun. You'll completely transform the painting. So just watch for that video. Thanks for watching. Bye.